It's a massive day on the academic calendar, the resumption of the school year, and education officials have been hard at it. Naturally, there have been hiccups at a school. It was set alight last night in Sibuking in the fall. Some structures remain incomplete in the Eastern Cape, and there were protests in Nkandla and unplaced learners in Gauteng. For an overview of what went wrong and what went right, we're joined now by Elijah Mklanga from the Department of Basic Education. He joins us on the line. A very good evening to you, and thank you so much for speaking to us. So I've just listed um, some of those things that didn't go right. What is the department's response to, especially schools that uh, had incomplete complete structures and some of the disruptions that occurred at schools? So, good evening, Tati. So, yes, it was a hectic day in the calendar today with learners going back to school, but it was not all smooth sailing because in some parts of the country and in some schools, um, there were a lot of things that happened. And one of the things that happened, as you know, is the turning down of the school in Sibukeng, and also in the same school, Elena attempted suicide, and uh, um, the emergency personnel were there to try to deal with that issue. And uh, in other parts of the country as well, we had disruptions where uh, in Kumalang, uh, the parents blocked the gate uh, for various reasons, and uh, we also had... Uh, plan that we needed to make in Kwazul Natal where the schools were damaged in the rain that took place in December. Mm. And of course we have the issues around the learners who still remain in place in Kauteng and in part of the Western Cape in the metro region. So yes, it's been a day of such incidents but overall um, things were fine because we've got 12 million, 12.9 million learners and 25,000 schools. So you cannot expect that everything goes according to plan, especially where different things have happened. So even if there were challenges, there were of different types. Some we could control and others we couldn't. Mm. But I want, let's talk about that school in Nkandla, and uh, that is Kundu Combined School, where parents and community members were protesting against the fact that the school does not offer grades 11 and 12. Surely this is a new problem. As the Department of Basic Education, you have been aware of the unhappiness. What is your response to this, that parents have felt that this was the only way to respond to the opening of schools? Well, the, the province is handling the matter. In fact, the NEC is uh, on top of the issue. Uh, these are issues that emanate from communities where that is. Even here in Caltech, we know that there's a community uh, which wanted a school built where there's currently a church built. And there were issues and meetings held and the conflicts continue. So these are issues that start at community level with communities demanding certain things which in some instances, are not immediately realizable. And uh, they therefore target uh, the back-to-school time when they know that they will get attention. So all of these matters are part of what we monitor and attend to. We always give ourselves 10 days in the, in the, in the, in the, in the opening of schools to try to resolve whatever issues that might be there so that uh, learning and teaching continues thereafter. So... It's within that time that we are trying to understand any eventuality that uh, might have occurred today which prevented learning and teaching from taking place. Mm. I, I want to talk about the matter of incomplete schools in the Eastern Cape. This is, it appears some would argue, a perennial problem. It's not the first time that people speak about gross inequalities there, that uh, the department is failing to capacitate schools to extend learning, especially to disadvantaged communities. Why does this problem still remain? It's an issue, again, of local communities who demand to be involved in tenders, in work that is happening in some instances, they demand to be included in contracts even when they don't qualify in terms of the building regulations. And uh, they demand work and they threaten to stop the work. And uh, what, what else would the appointed, the duly appointed contractor do is to run away from site because when your life is threatened, you are bound to, 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 to leave site and uh, go seek protection and allow the authorities and relevant stakeholders to try to resolve the matter. Mm. So those are some of the issues that uh, impact on the delivery timeline 
for school infrastructure. So we work against time, but these are the realities that emerge when things don't go according to plan and after people have uh, objected to certain things and the deadlock uh, and see. So the impact of it is that when it doesn't happen and when it doesn't happen, it impacts the entire program for the whole year, which means those schools there will be forced to extend hours or teach during the weekends or teach during the holidays this whole year. So let's talk about the admissions backlog. That is something that is obviously of great concern to many parents whose children stay out of school as a result of the online admissions in some parts of the country, but just admissions in general. How are you dealing with that? Uh, it's the cities. Uh, today, my colleagues in the free state were telling me that in the Bloomfield Bay in the city, there are still unplaced learners. And if you also check other cities, uh, is the same trend where everyone is moving into the city and demanding that their children be enrolled in those schools, even when the authorities indicate to them that those schools are full. And that becomes the situation that if you insist that you need to uh, enroll your child in this school, even when it's true, you are forcing the department to do something that it cannot immediately deliver on, which means they must tell the district and the district must pass on the message to the province who must then make a plan to procure mobile classrooms to extend the space in that school if it is possible to do so. Otherwise, it remains a conflict which um, affects uh, the normal business of, of the school, something which becomes difficult to handle. Right. And when it is projected out there, it looks like we are not doing our work. When in fact there are certain things that cannot be delivered immediately, it needs to be discussed because in any demand that parents make, there's always a financial implication. So we need to consider all those things before we move forward. All right. Uh, Mr. Mtlanga, just a quick and final question. Did all schools receive the requisite resources? Yes, that was done already last year in, in, in uh, September, October. So the deliveries were done, textbook, stationery, and all other things were done. So if there's any shortage now, it will be in a school where learners came through today and they were not expected there. And that becomes a new demand, but top-ups are always done because we store additional material in district offices. All right, thank you very much. Elijah Mslanger is a basic education spokesperson.